حقيقة بمهنية علمية وأشخاص اختاروا فعلا باختيار أعتبره أنا ممتاز والثالث أنها تمت لأول مرة في المملكة ولأول مرة في مجتمعنا الرابعة أن هذا التكريم وهذا من حظنا أنها تمت على يد رجل الفكر والكلمة والمبادرات العملية والعلمية أمير منطقة تحتضن الحرمين الشريفين والتي هي أهم موقعين في العالم ذلكم هو صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير ذلكم هو صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير خالد الفيصل هذا كله يعطي التكريم قيمة أكبر للأسباب التي ذكرتها المكرم الموضوع المكان الزمن كونها لأول مرة وشكرا شكرا لكل من ساهم من زملائي في البنك الأهلي وإخواني في أقل ما فيه إننا نشعر فعلا هل الشعور بعمل اعتبره متواضع ونعتبره في في بداياته ولكن فخرنا واعتزازنا به انه قدر من قبل اهم الجهه اللي يهمنا تقديرها وهو اولا مجتمعنا وثانيا ممثل هذا المجتمع وهذه المنطقه سمو الامير والسلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته سمو الأمير باسمي واسم الغفة التجارية الصناعية في جدة وباسم جميع من حضر هذا المنتدى يشرفني أن أطلب من سموكم الكريم نقل تحياتنا وامتناننا لحكومة خادم, الشر... الح... لحكومة خادم الحرمين الشريفين الملك عبد الله وولي عهده الأمين الأمير سلطان بن عبد العزيز لقد استلهمنا شعار المنتدى هذا اليوم لما نتمتع به ولله الحمد من ثروة طبيعية نحن على ثقة بإذن الله أن هذه القيادة الرشيدة ستحول هذه الثروة إلى عمل وبناء ليخدم هذا الوطن حاليا ومستقبلا وأشكر لكم حضوركم وشرفتمونا Highnesses, Excellencies, uh, now back to uh, the agenda. If I could ask those of you uh, who are standing to resume their seats, because our next speaker is a remarkable Saudi woman who excelled at school here and then excelled at two great universities in my homeland, King's College in the University of London and Cambridge University itself. She's currently a visiting scholar at Harvard University in the United States of America. She's a microbiologist seeking to harness the power of science to solve some of the world's environmental problems generated by industry. But she is also passionate about linking the worlds of academia with the worlds of commerce 
and industry. And she has a burning ambition to establish a center of excellence for her academic and commercial interests here in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. A remarkable woman I had enormous pleasure meeting and talking to on the way to this forum. Would you please give a very warm welcome indeed to Dr. Hayat Sindhi. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum I'm very honored and delighted to be with you here today When the forum um, organizers contacted me to be part of the session uh, Landscape in the future, who should take the lead? I was very excited I also felt it's going to be a challenging for someone like me. But after I said yes, they said, oh, by the way, George Soros and Richard Branson are in the same platform. I said this is far more challenging. How am I going to give more? They are great. They did so much. I also thought everyone has something special to give through their journey. My journey has involved breaking boundaries between East and the West. To serve society, to help everyone, child, man, or woman, of different religion, culture, or color. Not fearing and looking to find the good, the value of people who work together, humanity together. I was born in Mecca. And with the support of my family, I lived in my own to pursue my dream to become a scientist. I did my first degree at King's College London in pharmacology and later received my PhD at the University of Cambridge in biotechnology. Later, I started my own UK company with Saudi seed funding based on a nanotechnology idea. I moved to industry and I worked within the field of biotechnology in oil and water applications with the project based in Cambridge, Paris, and Moscow. This afternoon, I, I would like to describe to you a recent chapter in my journey, which took me to Harvard University as a visiting scholar to work at both a scientific research lab and Harvard Business School. As you know all, America has many outstanding research labs, and it's fair to say, sorry, it is safe to say Harvard's labs are all excellent. But there is one very special lab. By everybody's standards, it's a fantastic lab. It brings real products to societies in need. This is George Weiss Side Lab, where, where more than 950 scientific articles, more than 100 patents, and over 13 startup companies have emerged. I was thrilled to be invited to work there. How does this lab translate a scientific idea to a product? How do we do that? Three main factors. First, we have a high quality scientist. We have a high level of talent. We like to think that. Imagination, intellect, motivation, and we are passionate about what we, what we do. Second, we have an outstanding ability to work with others. Collaboration is the culture of our lab. Third, the diversity. We are mixed, a mix of cross cultures and cross disciplines. We have a broad range of background and variety of skills. We are 27 nationalities that work together. 
and I'm proud to say I'm the first Saudi link in this lab and I'm sure I won't be the last. Here we have solved a human problem. People usually fear mixing, fear to lose identities. People feel uncomfortable, even hostile to those who are different. Even in the scientific community, people frequently are afraid to share ideas and collaborate. In our lab, we have broken this human barrier. We have overcome the fear to mix even within 27 languages amongst us. I believe mixing is the only recipe of success to get value to society. What comes out, thank you. What comes out of uh, this mixture of experience, talent, uh, youth, different background, and the basic pleasure to work in teams? A research group who can do amazing things, can innovate things, can affect human lives. Let me take you through um, our innovation process in the lab. It usually starts with an idea, a question about fundamental science. We try to understand the idea, we brainstorm, and then we find out how to apply it. We build a prototype and follow up with the research engineering. After three to five years, there is likely to be a value creation, a startup company or a product. I have to say, the key part to create this value is the right collaboration steps. Every step, we collaborate with different foundations, in, uh, industries, research groups, businessmen, and even politicians across the globe. It's our partners that breathe life into the final product. The result is consistent breakthroughs and innovations of 13 startup companies from the lab worth over $20 billion. Also, we noticed being smart and having resources is not enough. It's not enough for true breakthroughs and innovations that can reach everyone. A lot of that energy can easily be wasted. Innovation cannot lead on its own. We need to lead innovation. People think that innovation or great discoveries is, uh, in the West is automatically going, uh, going to get to everyone, to every country. The fact is, this has never happened, and it will never happen. In the poor areas of the developing world, many people are deprived from the benefit of science and technology, which can give them better health and quality of life. Why is not happening for them? Because people in the developed world look only for their own end product. It is inconceivable to apply this product to the developing world. For example, it is not possible to carry a huge MRI scanner of the hospital in Nawaz to Africa, where the majority of people live in a remote area where there is no electricity. I think it's naive to think there is one science can carry it to everyone. To correct this, as a scientist, before we begin, we need to have a crystal clear vision about everyone's product requirements.